Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to solve this problem that was part of a 10th grade exam in Germany. In a right angle triangle, the sum of both legs is 68 centimeters, and the length of the hypotenuse is 52 centimeters. Find the length of each leg. Okay, so this is about a triangle a right angled triangle. So let's draw one so that we know what we're working here with. This is my right triangle with my right angle here. I call the corners A, B and C so that I have the sides A across A, B across B and C across C. They tell us that the length of the hypotenuse is 52 centimeters. So which of these sides is my hypotenuse? It always lies across the right angle. So the right angle here across this side is my hypotenuse and it is of length 52. So instead of my C, I can write 52 here. The other two sides of my triangle are called the legs. So we have the hypotenuse and the other sides are the legs and they tell us something about the legs. They tell us that the sum of both legs is 68. So the sum means plus if I add the length of these legs. So if I take A and add B, then I get a length of 68 which gives me an equation, but in this one equation we have two variables in here. So we would need a second equation to be able to solve for A and B, um, but I can find a second equation by looking at my right triangle because I can use the Pythagorean theorem. That tells me that take one of your legs and square it. So take your A and square it and if you add the square of the other leg, so b squared, then you get the hypotenuse squared, so 52 squared. And this gives me a second equation with a and b in here. So to solve for a and b, I can use this equation and solve it for a first. And if I've done that, then I can insert that result here for a. So if I want to solve this equation for a, I just have to get rid of the b here. So I subtract b on both sides of the equation. Then I have my a here. This cancels out. On the other side, I have my 68 minus my b. This is my a then. So now I can insert this here. So instead of a, I take the 68 minus b, and I have to square this. So I write it in parentheses, this whole thing, and square it. And then I have the rest of the equation, which looks like this. But now I have one equation, and there is only one variable in here. Only b is my variable. So I take this equation, and I try to solve it for b. Maybe we first get rid of these parentheses here. So we have parentheses squared, which means that I can write this as I take these parentheses and I multiply them by themselves again. So everything that was in there. Then I have my b squared and on the other side 52 squared we can use a calculator for this, we get a result of 2704. Now let's multiply these parentheses by multiplying each element of the first parentheses by each element of the second. So we have 68 times 68, which equals 4624. 68 times negative b equals negative 68b. Then negative b times 68, again negative 68b. And then negative b times negative b equals plus b squared. Then we have this plus b squared. And on the other side, this beautiful number. 
Okay, maybe we simplify the left side a little bit. Let's start with the b squared parts here. We have one b squared plus another one, which gives us two b squared. Then the parts with an b, so negative 68 of these minus 68 of these, gives us negative 136 of these b's and then plus the 4624 and on the other side we still have our number. This is a quadratic equation and we can solve it by bringing everything to one side of the equation. So we want to subtract this number here on both sides of the equation so that we have everything on one side so that we get we have our two b squared here, the negative 136b. If we calculate this, we get a result of 1920. And on the other side, this cancels out and we have our zero. This equation is now perfectly prepared for the quadratic formula. Let's write down the quadratic formula first. We get results for a quadratic equation by doing the following. Minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And we divide this by 2a. This is the formula in general. And we have to be careful that this b in here is not this b here. It's just a coincidence that we have the variable b. Usually you have the variable x, right? And this x should be this x then. So we just have to be careful that this b is not the same. But we have to find a, b, and c. So what is my a, what is my b, and what is my c? a is always the number in front of the squared part. So squared is here, so the 2 is my a. b is always the number in front of the variable that stands just by itself, so it's the negative 136. And c is always the number that doesn't have any variable, so it's the 1920. Let's write this in our formula. I call x not the result here because my variable is b, so my solution will be a b solution. Okay, this is just the formula in general. So I search for solutions for this equation here and I will get my results for b. But according to the formula, I have minus. For my b, I insert the negative 136. Then I have plus minus the square root off. I square my b, so I take the negative 136 and I square this thing. Then I subtract 4 times a is 2 and c is 1920. Okay, I have to do this longer, this line as well. And I'm uh, divided by 2 times my a equals 2. Okay, let's get this done with the help of a calculator. So we have minus minus is plus 136. If I calculate this whole thing here, I get a result of 56 and I divide it by 4. So I get two solutions for my b, b1 and b2. My first b is if I take the plus here, so I add these two numbers, I divide by 4, and I get a result of 48. And for my second solution, I take the minus here, so I subtract these two numbers, I divide by 4, and I get a result of 20. So I have two possible solutions for my b. Let's go back to the beginning, where we started. This is my first b, this is my second b. So either b, my side b here, is of length 48 centimeters or my b is of length 20 centimeters. Let's see in both cases, so if we look at these separately now, what will happen to my other side a? Because I have to find the lengths of each leg, so I only have the two possibilities for the leg b. What about my a? Well, I can calculate a by inserting b in here. 
So my A, my first possibility for my A is then 68 minus 48, which gives me 20 centimeters for the other side. And in my second possibility, if my B equals 20 centimeters, I would have for my A a length of 68 minus 20, which gives me 48 centimeters. So we see that we don't get two different uh, solutions here, but either my B side is 48 and my other side is 20, or it's the other way around that I have the short side here and the long side here. But these are, or this is the only solution to this problem. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.